Let's start describing the pelvic girdle. Look at the pelvic girdle. It forms your pelvis. It consists of three bones in total. We have a pair of, sorry, a pair of coxal bones or pelvic bones. You can call them pelvic or coxal bones. Right and left, we have the sacrum and the coccyx that we know is part of the actual skeleton. Those are the, the three bones that forms and enclose uh, the pelvic area. So one of the big functions of the pelvic girdle is that it serves as attachment for the lower limbs. It receives the head of the femur, which is the bone of your thigh, uh, like to hang the, the legs from, or your lower limbs from either side and connect the lower limbs then to the pelvic girdle and from there to the actual skeleton. It's all about making connections. Now, let's see the difference or let's compare the pelvic and the pectoral girdle. Remember the pectoral was in a true girdle. It was in the closed uh, belt that we described as a girdle. It was open on the back. The scapulas were free. Let's take a look at this one. On this one, uh, uh, um, sorry. Okay, look at this. Both uh, hip bones, coxal bones, pelvic bones, look how they join the sacrum posteriorly. On that line, that marks the, uh, the place of the articulation that we'll describe later. The thing is that they, this belt is closed posteriorly and both coxal bones joined on the midline anteriorly um, to form another articulation. So in that way, the entire uh, girdle is closed in this, in this uh, type or in, in the pelvic girdle, unlike the pectoral girdle, where is or what is this relevant for us? Since this is an enclosed girdle, is of course more stable, less prone to uh, injuries, less prone to dislocations uh, compared to the pectoral girdle, but of course uh, it has less mobility. One of the facts that it has less mobility is, uh, mobility is that the girdle is a true and closed closed uh, girdle but the other explanation for that is that the socket that grabs the head of the humerus is deep nothing compared to the glenoid cavity that was a fl almost a flat cavity so all of these factors contribute to the less range of motion of the pel pelvic girdle but uh greater stability when we compare that to the um, pel uh, pectoral girdle. Now, <clears throat> each, <laughs> that's funny, uh, 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 let me, okay, <sighs> the pelvic or the pelvis in general, pelvis in plural, uh, they look totally different if we're uh, observing a female or a male pelvis. And this is so true that these facts, these differences are used by anatomists, by forensic uh, professionals to distinguish with almost 100% of uh, uh, certainty that the skeleton that they are examining is a female or a male uh, a skeleton just based on the anatomy of the pelvic uh, or the pelvis. Now, just think about it. The female pelvis is made to get a child or to hold a baby in there. So, of course, we need a wider uh, and maybe shallower uh, pelvis than that of the, the male. So, which one do you think in here is the female. Let's see. Which one do you say? Yes, 
look at the space in here between this is a lateral view so this is your hip bone and in here this is the sacrum and the coccyx and look at the space between uh, the coxal bone and the sacrum look at this space and compare to this space in here is wider this is a female uh, pelvis this is a male uh, pelvis the the um, the curvature on the uh, sacrum and coccyx is more pronounced in male than in female is more open in uh, females now <clears throat> look at this image this is like you are imagine that you make a transfer section through my pelvis or any pelvis and now you're seeing from below okay this is an inferior view in here you have again the two coxal bones this is what you see of course with a lot of skin and muscles but this is the view that you get when you are receiving a child during child uh, uh, when the baby is uh, being born so this is the coxal bones this is the uh, the sacrum and this is the coccyx again compare this is the male see that is narrower than the one on the female um, and this is not new for you you know this anatomy you have been there all of us has been there um, we knew so well that anatomy when we were babies ready to come to this beautiful war that we knew that, well, if mom has the sacral promontory, remember that landmark? The sacral promontory is too pronounced in, that, in mommy, so I will have less space to pass through. That can stop the baby to pass through the birth canal and can end in a C-section. What else? If the baby passes through this opening which we call the true pelvis the superior one but then when he gets here he sees that oh my gosh either the these spines in here or the coccyx or to into the pelvis it will stop again the descending of the baby through the birth canal again another reason why several of, uh, of these deliveries end in um uh, c-section although this coccyx is kind of flexible then the head of the baby when it passes through can pull it back uh, a little bit and you know so well this anatomy that when you were a baby and you passed through that uh, birth canal you knew exactly all the diameters all the protrusions of the pelvis so you could rotate your face while you were passing through to accommodate your head towards you know according to the larger diameter of the pelvis isn't that amazing and we were just ready here to catch you up <clears throat> so each coxal bones forming uh, we're going to describe start describing the coxal bones we're not going to describe the sacrum and coccyx that was part of the actual skeleton. Now we only need to describe the coxal or pelvic bones. And when we were kids, like 10 years ago, <laughs> you're right, um, these bones consisted of three different bones. We have the ilium in, in this frontal anterior view. That superior part is the ilium. This is the lateral view of the coxal bone. How do I know that? Oh, uh, oh, well, because, because he has this socket. And this socket, as I told you before, it receives the head of the femur to form the hip joint. So, of course, obviously, that socket has to be pointed laterally. Unlike most of the bones that we have described, the most of them have an anterior aspect and a posterior aspect. This is look oriented like this. So what we have is a lateral aspect and a medial aspect. 
Then we have an anterior border and a posterior border. So the superior portion of the bone is called the ilium. So you can see it in here, you can see it in the lateral and in the medial aspect of the bone, okay? The second bone that we have is the pubic bone or the pubis. And see, I put it like that because it has the shape of a V. So you can see that it has those two um, uh, projections, okay, or those two branches. One is going up, the other one is going down, okay? And we unite these two bones right in the midline, okay? So it's like that. So the pubis faces anteriorly. It's in the front, in the anterior aspect of your pelvis. In here, in the detached bone, is um, colored in red. And here, of course, we don't have the color. But the way to know which one, because so far I know, okay, this is lateral and this is medial. But is this a right or a left bone? See? So the, no, the way that you know is that, again, filling everything in anatomy, touch everything. So you're going to feel one end is flatter, is thinner, then the other end is wide, rough. Look at that roughness in there. So irregular. So it's very irregular and wide because in here is where we are sitting on right now. Uh, I don't think I have enough hands to put this, but it's like this. We're sitting up on top of those uh, rough, like that, <laughs> rough areas which are the ischium, which is the green posterior aspect of the bone, okay? So that's the ischium, the posterior aspect of the bone, and the thin Part is the pubis the faces anteriorly so again ilium ischium the fat one a pubis um, I was going to okay the three bones they are separated during childhood but during childhood they fuse together and then you cannot recognize as you can see you cannot see, say which one is which uh, the important thing to remember is that at the level of the socket that we're going to call acetabulum uh, is this deep cavity, this socket that receives the head of the humerus, uh, femur, the head of the femur, uh, consists of the fusion of the three bones. So superiorly is made out of the ilium, uh, uh, anteriorly is made out of the pubis, and posteriorly it consists of the um, the ischium. Again, remember it receives the head of the femur. Um, another um, structure that we're going to see before entering into the detailed explanation of each of the bones is you cannot miss it. This entire hole in here, okay, kind of big, right? So this is the foramen magnum. Remember, foramen is a hole. So and not magnum, obturator. This is the obturator foramen. And the obturator foramen is partially covered by a membrane. Um, some ligaments, muscles attached in here, and let's pass a, a nerve, an obturator nerve. But we'll describe that. We will add those layers in future uh, chapters. So again, so far, ilium, pubis, ischium, acetabulum laterally, and uh, obturator foramen. See you in the next video lecture.